Hello, and welcome to Our Devotions, where together we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Daniel, and this is my amazing wife, Amanda. Hello, today we're going to be talking about seeds and weeds, using the book of Galatians as our launching point. So grab your Bible and get ready to jump right in with us. chapter 6 uh, lays out some awesome stuff here. In verse 7, I say awesome stuff. It's important and sometimes disliked. <laughs> it's a correction. <laughs> yeah, it says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. And then it goes on in verse 8 and spells this out really clear, giving us <clears throat> direct application for it. He goes, the one who sows to his flesh will reap from the flesh corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And I love that, how, how detailed it makes it, yeah. because it's, it's easy in some areas to recognize the power of sowing and reaping, the seeds and yeah. the weeds, the seeds <laughs> and the trees. Like, yeah. in the garden, you know that what you plant determines what you get. Yep. And... You know that somehow seeds are going to try to make their way in, even if you thought you planted great stuff. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but in the orchard, in the trees that I plant, I know that what I plant determines what I get. Yep. It's true in my garden. It's true in my body. Yeah. Um, if I sow donuts and TV time, like it's, <laughs> the fruit is different than if I sow a healthy diet and some some writing. Like it's just. Yep. There's a physical sowing and reaping. But he goes through and goes, it's not just true in your garden. It's yeah. not just true with your exercise. This is true in whether you're sowing in to the flesh or you're sowing into the spirit. Yeah, like, and whether you're doing it on purpose or not. That is frustrating. <laughs> <clears throat> I wish only the seeds I, ch I wanted to plant. Yeah. Not the ones I carelessly cast out there. Not the words that I wasn't thinking about when I spoke. Not the idle, I felt lazy and so I turned something on. Like, yeah. like what things did I sow in when I was being careless? Yeah. Because they, they, they still, they got sowed. Yep. And what we sow produces a harvest. And beginning to look at this is, is uh, frustrating, but it's also so powerful. Because all of a sudden I can go, hey, these things that are growing in my life, and we talked the other day about the fruit of the Spirit and the, the works of the flesh from Galatians 5. When I begin to look and go, well, what am I sowing into? What am I being connected to? What am I letting take root in my heart? Because these things produce in my life. Yeah. And a lot of times we want to, we, we just, we don't want it to work that way. And he goes through and he puts so much more emphasis on our thoughts than what we tend to. Yeah. We tend to look at the tree. We tend to look at the action and we think that that's where things need to be controlled. And he goes, you need to control what's being sown. And yeah. in Galatians chapter one, he goes through and says, James. oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> jumping around. James chapter one, at least you can see the page I'm on. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. And he goes through talking about these actions actually start as desires. Where am I meditating? Yep. And I have, I have found battles that I was fighting that were unnecessary, but they were because I let seeds of weeds land in my heart. Yeah. And I let this seed, this thought begin to grow. And then I'm all of a sudden battling this desire. Yeah. And you're like, oh, if I cut it off over here, if I uproot the weed, if I uproot that thought, if I refuse to give that complaint uh, mind space, yeah. if I take these thoughts captive here, then these thoughts never produce a fruit. Yep. If I choose and go, hey, you know, look at the balance in my life and going, what things do I, am I letting pour into me? Yeah. You know, like this week, if you look and you go, how much TV time, how much God time, how much, you know, like what seeds are being put in? Because, yeah. you know, these different things, they're, they're putting in thought, they're putting in seeds, they're putting yep. in perspective, they're putting in a view of normal, a concept 
of what is right and wrong. And they're, they're pouring that into us. Yeah. And we have to go and recognize it and then decide, is that going to produce what I want produced? Right. Well, and that can be hard to change your thoughts and can be discouraging. I've heard many people say, oh, I'm trying to control my thoughts, but they keep coming, they keep coming. But a thought that just enters is not the sin. It's when we allow it to stay and sit and fester. When bad thoughts come, we have to just rebuke them and replace it with what God has to say. And I love in Galatians 6, in verse 9, it says, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So I want to encourage you, do not give up. Yes. It can be hard. That's why this verse is here. Don't grow weary in doing good, because God knew that it's possible for us to grow weary. He knew it's hard. But don't give up. Keep focusing on what God's word has to say. Keep weeding out the bad thoughts that shouldn't be there and replacing them with God's thoughts. Yes. If you need to change TV shows, take that off. If you mess up and make a mistake, don't grow weary. Try again. Every morning, God's mercies are new. And I love that, that that encourages us to never get so down on yourself. Don't allow the enemy to bring condemnation. Yeah. The Holy Spirit brings conviction, which tells us, okay, you need to change but it doesn't tell us you're so bad you could never change. That's a lie from the enemy that also needs to be uprooted and told to leave. Yeah. Because God, when he brings us conviction, he brings us hope. And he brings us this feeling of, I'm with you. You can do this. You can overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. The word is more powerful than any thought rut that has ever been created. Ooh, and you good. can overcome it. Yes. I love that even a garden that's out of control can be weeded. Yes. And in Galatians chapter 6, it says that we should test our work. And I think that's so important to look and go, we need to test our garden to look at it and go, yeah. hey, what, what fruit is growing? Yeah. And if you look and you go, that's a lot of weeds. Well, then you know it. Yeah. Then start weeding. It's not fail. Right. Well, we talked about it earlier this week. It's process. Right. And so you go, all right, let's weed. Let's sow the right seeds and watch what grows in our heart, what grows in our life change. Yeah. It's such a powerful, powerful thing. Yeah, a couple years ago in my garden, I noticed some creeping Charlie taking over the backside of my garden. And I remember just looking at it and being like, oh, I just want to burn it down and give up. <laughs> <laughs> because it's stuff so hard to get up. But uh, my mother-in-law came and she saw it and she's like, oh, we need to go get some shovels and dig it out. And I was like, oh, I know. So, but she was right there with me and she grabbed a shovel and together we went to town on that Creeping Charlie and we got it all out of there. But that was overwhelming to first look at. And one of the scriptures in the Bible tells us to confess our sins one to another. Sometimes we need someone to come alongside yep. of us and to help us weed that out and to say, oh, let's think positively or let's speak words of life, someone that can encourage us on whatever area we may be yeah. working on to keep doing the right thing. So I encourage you to be a good friend to those around you and to see if there's somebody who wants to encourage us in our weeding process of our minds or if we can be an encouragement to someone else as well. Yes, absolutely. I just got from the confessions. Yeah, the people that we let so into us yeah. make a difference and giving them permission. Because you can have great people around you, but if you don't give them permission to speak into your life, a lot of times we can miss out on the benefit that was available right there. Yeah, it's good. Well, repeat these out loud with me. <clears throat> I live generously. I live generously. Overflowing with God's love. <clears throat> Overflowing with God's love. In all I do. In all I do. I am filled with the grace. I am filled with the grace. And power of God. And power of God. I stand in prayer. I stand in prayer. To see God's will done. To see God's will done. On earth as it is in heaven on earth as it is in heaven. I am quick to listen. <clears throat> I am quick to listen. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. And slow to become angry. And slow to become angry. I encourage others. I encourage others. And build them up. And build them up. Whatever I speak or do. Whatever I speak or do. I do everything as unto Jesus. I do everything as unto Jesus. I don't have a spirit of fear. I don't have a spirit of fear. But of power, love, but and of, a sound mind. But of power, love, and a sound mind. God, I thank you that we can have the fruit of your spirit inside of us. God, that you would help us to plant the right seeds. That you would help us to uproot things that have been in our heart, lies from the enemy, habits that we, we had built, God, that are, are taking us in the wrong direction, that these things would be uprooted, that we would have um, the right things sown in that produce the fruit that we want to see that makes us more like you. And we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. We hope that this encouraged you today. If it did, please hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons so that it can go out to more people to be encouragement to them as well. And we invite you to dive into the Word for yourself and discover how much God has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.